What up, you guys? This is Brother Trey, man. Look, we got another page, another uh, chapter that I want to read with you guys. Um, this one is called Deeper Effects of Being Emotionally Shut Down. So let me go ahead and switch the camera here so that you guys can see what I'm reading as well. <clears throat> here it is. Deeper Effects of Being Emotionally Shut Down. Of course, emotionally immature parents were once children themselves. And as children, they may have had to shut down many of their deeper feelings in order to be acceptable to their own parents. It's likely that Ellie's and Sarah's mothers also grew up with parental insensitivity toward their feelings. So Ellie and Sarah are um, ladies that had, they had their, some examples of their personal life story in this book. Okay, so many emotional, emotionally immature people were over pruned early in life growing up within a very limited range of acceptability. Their personalities are like stunted bonsai trees, trained to grow in unnatural shapes. Wow, that was, that was a great example. Because they had to bend to fit their families, they were unable to develop fluidly into the integrated natural people they might have become. So right off the bat, you guys, that is something that's actually very, very interesting. So they said, he said that, the personalities of these image of these children who had to bend their emotional sensitivity towards what their parents deemed as acceptable are akin, very similar to bonsai trees that have been forced to grow in these unusual. So we think that bonsai trees, the unusual shapes of bonsai trees, I actually have one um, on the by my TV, but. We love, we, th we think they're beautiful, but that's not natural. And so if you were to think of your own character, like let's say that your emotional body had, like your emotional self had a body. And let's say we could see it. It would be contorted. It would be distorted. Maybe like a hip would be out of place. Your back would probably look like a grudge. Your emotional body, right? It's all out of whack. That's really interesting, you guys. Just imagine what kind of things in life that... You know, you're unable to really experience or the types of experiences that you like the way that you interpret situations because of this filter that you have based off of this warped emotional sense. It's crazy. It may be that many emotionally immature people weren't allowed to explore and express their feelings and thoughts enough to develop a strong sense of self and a mature individual identity. This made it hard for them to know themselves, limiting their ability to engage in emotional intimacy. If you don't have a basic sense of who you are as a person, you can't learn how to emotionally engage with other people at a deep level. This arrested self-development gives rise to additional, deeper personality weaknesses that are common among emotionally immature people as outlined in this chapter. Wow, that is actually something that's crazy, you guys. So, personal story here. Um, me growing up, I felt like I was given things um, from my family, but when I when it comes to an emotional standpoint, I don't think that I was ever really open with that. My I was really fat when I was a kid, so I got made fun of so much by my own peers, and so like that made me feel so uncomfortable to even go outside to do anything. And I felt like I didn't really have friends. You know, my mom and um, my dad tried, uh, they tried to bring other kids around me, but I, I never really had as much like outside um, type of, I was, a, I was a gamer, like a big gamer. Now all of that changed once I hit like middle school, middle school, high school, I joined sports, all of it turned completely around, stopped playing video games. I was outside like a, a motherfucker partying, like I was crazy. But when I think about it, it was kind of hard for me to engage emotionally. And to me, my brother had died. My parents were divorced. You know, I'd, I'd seen my mom and dad get into physical fights. You know, I was having a lot of internal issues that I, I never knew how to even talk about. I felt like nobody cared. So it was hard for me to, it was hard for me to engage sexually with somebody because I knew inside I was emotionally like vulnerable. And this thing in this red pill manosphere space, People want to talk about, oh, man, you just, you fuck that beta. You just a little beta male, man. man. Real men don't got feelings. Real men, you give a fuck about that. No, fuck all that shit, bro. That's stupid. That is, that is dumb, and it's like, it's not realistic. 
everyone has feelings. If you ignore your feelings, you know what happens? You become one of these these man children, right? These these men, what they say is like, and I'm not even trying to do I'm not even trying to like engage in this this I know there are conventions that downplay and downgrade men all the time, and this isn't one of those things. You are becoming an adult. You have to be in tune with your emotions. Everyone has emotions at some level. You need to know how to express it. You need to know how to communicate it. You can't always approach someone trying to fucking shoot them or fight them because they disagree with you. You're never going to get anywhere with that type of mentality, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could be a rapper. You could be one of these e-celebrities or some shit like that that feel like they don't have to be held accountable with stuff. But eventually, it's all going to catch up. It is so much better to be emotionally in tune with yourself because you will be able to bond with other people as well. It's like, I, I really missed out on a lot of things. And I know that if I don't get this in check now, you know, it's only going to continue further and further along in life, you guys. It really will. So let's get into it. Subsection. It says, they are often inconsistent and contradictory. Instead of having a well-integrated sense of who they are, emotionally immature people are more like an amalgam of various borrowed parts, many of which don't go together well. An amalgam is like a, um, like a lot of things compounded on top of each other. Because they had to shut down important parts of themselves out of fear of their parents' reactions, their personalities formed in isolated clumps, like pieces of a puzzle that don't fit together. This explains their inconsistent reactions, which make them so difficult to understand. Because they probably weren't allowed to express and integrate their emotional experiences in childhood, these people grow up to be emotionally inconsistent adults. Their personalities are weakly structured, and they often express contradictory emotions and behaviors. They step in and out of emotional states, never noticing their inconsistency. When they become parents, these traits create emotional bafflement in their children. One woman described her mother's behavior as chaotic, quote-unquote, flip-flopping in ways that made no sense. This inconsistency means that as parents, emotionally immature people may be either loving or detached, depending on their mood. Their children feel fleeting moments of connection with them, but don't know when or under what conditions their parent might be emotionally available again. This sets up what behavioral psychologists call an intermittent reward situation, meaning that getting a reward for your efforts is possible, but completely unpredictable. I'll read that again. This sets up the behavior psychologist, what behavior psychologists call an intermittent reward situation, meaning that getting a reward for your efforts is, com is possible, but completely unpredictable. This creates a tenacious resolve to keep trying to get the reward because once in a while, these efforts do pay off. In this way, parental inconsistency can be the quality that binds children most closely to their parent as they keep hoping to get that infrequent and elusive positive response. There's one more chapter or one more paragraph I'm going to read, but let's focus on that right there. What that we just talked about, what I just read, completely describes abusive relationships. For men and women. Men who are in relationships with verbally, mentally, and emotionally abusive women get that elusive bit of, 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 of love, right? Love of rewards. So they feel like they got to keep spending the money. They feel like they got to keep giving the gifts. They feel like they got to keep sacrificing the time. They feel like they got to destroy their dreams, their fantasies, their desires for this woman, right? And then on the flip side, women stay with abusive men because they feel like this reward is worth, it outweighs all the cons that come out of it. It's, it's not hard, reading it this way, right? Because I know a lot of people have to say they have their opinions with this. Reading it this way, looking at abusive relationships, toxic relationships, relationships that would be better if it was uh, sorted out better. Looking it through this lens of an emotionally immature person clarifies a lot of different things. Does this make you look at your relationships differently? Let me know in the comments down below. Growing up with an inconsistent parent is likely to undermine a child's sense of security, keeping the child on edge. Since a parent's response 
provides a child's emotional compass for self-worth, such children also are likely to believe that their parents' changing moods are somehow their faults. Now, I'm going to read this little section here real quick. This is Elizabeth's story. So this is someone that's just a, just an excerpt. Elizabeth's mother was emotionally unpredictable and kept her guessing. She always felt anxious when approaching her mother. Would her mother push her away or would she be interested in, and engaged? Elizabeth told me, I had to read her moods constantly. If she seemed negative, I would keep my distance. But if she was in a good mood, I could talk to her. She had the power to make me happy and I tried my best to win her approval. As a child, Elizabeth often worried that she had caused her mother's this negative mood changes. Feeling responsible, Elizabeth came to the conclusion, I must be flawed. Elizabeth wasn't a flawed child, but the only way she could make sense of her mother's mood was to think that they resulted from something she did, or worse, something she was. Man, that's some that's some deep stuff, you guys. That's some very deep stuff right there. Um, once again, you guys, I'm not sponsored by this, but this is just a great book, a great book to get into, um, just to read a lot of stuff. I think that reading books like this is is the answer. We want to talk about so much abusiveness. We want to talk about so much toxicity. We want to talk about how people can't get along. Well, I think that if we start to understand ourselves and understand the experiences that we had as children and as adults, if we start to look at it from a different lens, a healthier lens, a lens that that aims to cure as opposed to ease symptoms, right? The world would be a much better place and you can live a higher quality of life if you were able to look at things in this type of way. Did this reach out to you guys? Did this speak to you a little bit? Um, let me know in the comments down below, you guys. I really enjoyed this book. Um, I shared a little bit about myself with you. Um, let me know if you guys like this kind of thing. I'm gonna keep doing it because, you know, I like it and it's good for me to even talk about it out loud. So. Um, until next time, you guys, I appreciate it.